They'll have to get him down. Yeah. Oh, you'll learn them when you're in the middle of a scene and you've nah. got to put them down. Yeah, right? You're going to figure it out real quick. That truck really needs to warm up. Pretty sure it's got drop suspension. Okay, let's get over here and look at this truck here. You know the Century is made by the same people. Probably this one better Air brakes. Well, it's a newer truck too, Kale. Okay? L arms on this thing suck. Okay, just like we did on the uh, other truck, you need to take a look at this thing and see uh, what it's capable of doing. <coughs> what do you think this truck weighs? Uh, 17,200 pounds. 17,200 pounds. That's pretty close, probably around that, right around that, 17, 17,500. I have one that weighs, uh, that's similar to this one that weighs uh, 17,500. Yeah, we got one that weighs 17,200. Of the 17,500, how much do you think is on the front? About 40 percent. Yeah, maybe it's about 30. seven on the front, and it's about 10.5 in the back. Uh, that's what my particular truck is. Mine's pretty similar to this one, so this one's going to be pretty close to the same thing. So if we weigh uh, 17.5, what's our gross vehicle weight rating? 25, 500. 25, 500. So how much capacity do we have? 8,000. So that means if we could put 8,000 fully distributed on both front and rear axle, we could put about a 8,000 pound vehicle on here. Okay, how about the rear axle? 17.5. It's been the same thing as my truck was. 17.5, and if we weigh 10.5, we got about 7 there now. Okay, so now we're down to about 7 because if we put more than 7 up here, we're going to probably overload the rear axle. So the only way we're going to be able to get to 8 is if we get the heavy end of the vehicle forward and as far forward as possible. So some of that 8,000 pounds is on the front wheels. How much is the rating on the front front axle? Okay, we can load the front axle on this one, right? About 8,000. Yeah, so we need to know what that is. How much? 8,000. 8,000. So if it weighs seven, we only have about 1,000 pounds capacity up there. But that's good enough. That would let us put an 8,000 pound car in here if we can get the heavy end forward to get the 1,000 pounds on that one and only 7,000 pounds on this end. We'd be at the maximum of the uh, front axle weight rating and the rear axle weight rating. We'd still be under the, uh, and be at the maximum of the gross vehicle weight rating. And so that's pretty good uh, capacity, eight, between seven and 8,000 pounds that you can put on the deck. That's without something on the wheel end. Right? If we go up, if we go to seven or eight thousand on the deck, we can't put anything on the wheel after we'll overload the rear axle. Uh, if we want to be able to tow two cars, we're going to need to limit the one on the on the deck to about five thousand pounds, five or six thousand pounds, then we can put two or three thousand pounds on the wheel end. So if, whenever you're towing uh, uh, with the car carrier, we want to try and put the if you only have one car, we put it on the deck. If we have two cars, then we put the heavy one on the deck, the lighter one on the wheel end. Um, we got to do the same thing we did on the other truck, make sure the tires are rated high enough for the axle, but as long as they uh, went to a tire twice, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, where do we find the ratings for the uh, record, the deck? Should be right in the front of the bed. Yeah, usually right underneath the bed on the front, on the side, fr side of the frame rail up in the underneath. Up underneath. Yeah. Uh, 10,000 bed ratings, 10,000. 10,000 deck. Wheel lift rating, 3,000. Winch rating is 8,000. Does it say what kind of wire rope? Wire rope, working load limit, 3,500 pounds, 6 by 19, fiber core. Okay, so pretty much standard equipment on the rope. And the rope uh, dimension and length is 3 8 by 50 feet. Okay, one of the other questions that's on the test is, uh, it's, I think it's true or false, and it says, um, you can't always lift and tow ratings equal to the wheel lift rating. Same thing with the deck, you can't always 
lift and or transport rating is equal to the deck rating because the you're deck limited by the chassis. Have anything to do with the cab chassis. This deck will hold 10,000 pounds. If you put it on a cab chassis, it can hold 10,000 pounds. But this cab chassis can't hold 10,000 pounds. Same thing with the wheel lift. He's got a 4,000 pound wheel lift, but he can't lift 4,000 pounds because the steering load reduces it to 2,300 pounds. So you can't always lift and tow the weights equal to the rating of the truck because the cab chassis affects that too. Okay, so we got all the ratings on that. We would go through and look at all our straps and our uh, chains and make sure that they're equal to the uh, task. So if, we got, if you could put an 8,000 pound car on here, how much capacity do you need in straps? Tie downs. Need. Okay, well what we recommend is you have at least one and a half what the load is. So if you have an 8,000 pound vehicle, 12, you're going to have at least a 12,000 pound capacity in all four of your tie downs. So how much does that mean each tie down has to be? 4,000. 4, 3,000 pounds. So as long as you got 3,000 pounds on each of your tie downs, that gets you up to your 12,000 that's one and a half what you would put up here. Okay, so you take a look at your ratchets, you take a look at your hooks and your chains, uh, everything that you use for tie downs and make sure that each one of them, each corner, has a tie down that's greater than at least 3,000 pounds. If you got that, then you're good for 8,000 pound vehicles on, on the deck here. All your car carriers have controls on both sides now, so you can operate from either side. And they're basically, they have the same kind of controls. This, uh, normally Miller Industries has theirs color coded. This one is the, the only one that's color coded is the witch. Um, but they've got them labeled, which it should, that's how it should be anyways. So you're gonna have two, only two controls for your wheel lift. On a normal wheel lift, we have three controls. The only one we don't have on a, on a car carrier normally is tilt. All you have is up and down and in and out. But if you look at the way the wheel lift is mounted, it gets automatic tilt anyways. Right? When we raise and lower the wheel lift, it's automatically going to tilt a little bit anyways because of the way it's designed. So we really don't need tilt on a car carrier, so all you have is in and out, up and down for the uh, wheel lift. The uh, middle control that's red on this one is our winch. That's pretty standard on Miller trucks. If it's red, it's a winch. Uh, so that lets the winch uh, rope in and out. And then you have two other controls that operate the bed. One of them slides the bed forwards and backwards. The other one tilts the front end of the bed up and down. Um, all your uh, car carriers up in the front have bed locks that hold the bed down in the front. So when you uh, go to operate your car carrier, you have to slide the bed back first, and then you can tilt the bed up. If you try to tilt it before you slide it back, you can damage those bed locks. On Miller trucks, what they did is they made it so you kind of an anti-tilt device, so you can't tilt it too soon. If you uh, try to tilt the, uh, uh, operate the tilt control, it won't move because underneath over here there's a bracket on the edge of the uh, frame rail and then there's an arm that comes up from the tilt control. When the bed's forward, it's in, in between this little bracket so now the tilt control won't operate. Once you slide the bed back a little bit, now it's free to operate. So they did that so that you have to slide the bed back first before you can tilt it and you won't damage the bed line. The only problem is this one's already falling over a little bit. It has a set screw that holds it up and if the set screw gets loose, it'll just fall out of the way and then you can still tilt the bed too soon. So you what? still want to get in the habit of sliding the bed back first before you tilt the front end of the bed up. What about swivel beds? As far as turning... The whole bed moves. Yeah, there's um, there's only, I think, two manufacturers that do that. Danco's one of them, and I think Dynamic. Dynamic made one at one time. Uh, I don't know, have you ever operated one? No, but about the company I'm working for, he's got one. Yeah, the um, I uh, I did one at a, a tow show. They happened to have one, so we played with it. And it, it, it's, it's kind of cool if you were going to do like... A, you know, one of the pictures they show with Danco is a, a car over the guardrail on the freeway. Guy pulls up along the uh, shoulder, pivots the bed down on the other side of the guardrail and just loads it onto the bed. Mm. Yeah, perfect. You know, he gets it over the guardrail onto the bed in one, in one move. Uh, if you're in a parking lot and, and you, you can't get your truck lined up to, to load it, you can park in the roadway and turn the bed That's and, and still load it. For. Yeah, so those are both benefits, good things. I don't know how maintenance goes on those things or if they, they're reliable or not. I don't know. There's not a lot of them out there right now. But yeah, they do make a ro rotating uh, rotating car carrier. And Galaxy makes one where the whole bed comes off the back. Yeah, there's another one that was a, a, a level loader. Yeah, one of the other issues you have obviously is loading angle. If you have cars that are low to the ground, the loading angle it might be a problem for you. So they do. They did make a few trucks that the bed almost comes down to flat on the ground. Yeah. Um, they did some that were low loading angles, but not quite flat on the ground. But yeah, there's a the few that go that flat. The ones that bed go off to the ground, it, their front wheel drive. Well, that's the ones that drop down in between because that's yeah. take the rear axle out, right? Well, it is, it's this other company I, that's down the road. They have, it's, I mean, the bed will come straight to the floor, mm -hmm. but it's like it's only front wheel drive. Right. They converted a four wheel drive to front wheel drive. Yeah, they keep breaking transfer cases. Yeah, I, I haven't seen many of those out there, so I don't know how well they're working either. But then they also have the beds that. Right. They have one that has like a, a lift arm that comes down and drops the whole front of the bed down. Yeah. That's Galaxy. Yeah. So you can you can do a, a very 
as low loading angle yeah. as you get, pretty much. Was it expensive check? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but most people, I, those for some reason aren't catching on real well. They're not wow. selling a lot. I don't know if it's price, could be the price. Yeah. They can't handle that much weight, especially if they're on the ground. Yeah, so for whatever reason, they're not selling real well. So we're still getting mostly like 10 or 15 degree loading angle trucks. But one of the things you can do is if you have air brakes on your truck, you can get air dump suspension on the rear. Yeah. That'll let you dump the air out of the airbags in the back, and that's going to lower the bed about four inches. Yeah. You well, can also get low profile tires, you can get low profile frames. So you can get pretty good loading angles. You can get down to about, I think uh, the lowest one I've seen was about eight degree loading angle. But, yeah, but eight degree is pretty good. Yeah. 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 Even then, sometimes you run into problems with that. Yeah. How many cars right. do we get to? You can't put so, the four bys under. You gotta put two by fours in. You gotta build a house. You pull out a one by. You put half inch play with. And you go from there. But once you start stacking the wood, though, then the wood starts going to move. No matter how much pressure you put out with the bed. Just get it done. And then Jordan makes one that the bed is just angled that way. So when you're looking at it when it's sitting flat like that, the back end of the bed sits up like this. So when it's down on the ground and it's at a lower loading angle. All of those things are to help you load cars that are lower loading angle. If you don't have any of those features, how do you get cars that are low to the ground onto the car carrier? Four by fours. A bunch of wood. Carry a lot of wood. If you operate a car carrier, you want to carry a lot of wood. Uh, that'll help you on a, on a lot of cars to get them up onto the deck. Um, I have a uh, no, they told me, because when I first started learning, one guy trained me that uh, you put it in front of the bed, but uh, I learned from other people that you put the wood underneath the bed. For the, to get wrapping? Yeah. Yeah, under the bed is better because if you go under the bed and you come down on top of it, you get the lower loading angle and you keep the wood from moving. Right when the tire hits the wood, it doesn't push it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So most people will go under the bed. That's that is where if you don't get it all the way underneath the bed, it'll shoot up and hit the back of the. Right. Yeah, right. you gotta so get. You want to kind of get it under the bed and plant the bed on the wood so it doesn't move. Yeah. Um, now, when you're backing up to a car, how close do you want to get with it? Half the length of the car. Absolutely. Half the length of the bed. What most guys do is after they operate the truck a couple of times, they get used to looking at the front grill of the truck, and they know that I'm gonna stop when when I can't see the grill anymore. Or whatever it is. It's going to depend on how long your bed is. So depending on the length of your bed, uh, most trucks are 19 foot or 21 foot beds, uh, but you can get a 24 foot bed too. So depending on the length of your, or you can get a 17 foot bed. Uh, so depending on what length your bed is, you're going to have to operate it a few times to figure out where the next you need to stop. But one thing I would recommend is that go little, far enough away that you can get and the bed go a little wider on that's going to go. If you back up so close to the car that you can't get a fucking the bed, you have to tilt it higher in order to get down the ground. So if you have a low clearance car, that's going to give you a problem. Yeah, but the license, put a, put a sofa back back the, the thing with the 24 foot bed is that's, we can still run a class C. It's a long fucking wheelbase on that shit, dude. Yeah, wide turns. But you're typically going to be using that for OPAR, not for doing yeah. recovery well, jobs. Just, but this is, no, no. That's your OPAR no, run-up. No, you can't even do out of stock with this shit. You can, but so not, you regular, go, not regular not regular. These days, you got to go out of the fucking yeah. dealership, drop it up in the back. Dude, you, you barely fit in there with a fucking Honda. How can I fit in there with a fucking flatbed? You're fitting there with a wheel lift. Oh, flatbed. I mean, you're talking about the Tony. Shelly BMW. A couple of times I went, no, that's that's clear. <laughs> fucking Honda yeah, they World get, was they get A Honda World, I drop him right in the service drive. If he's not a spot, he's going to go in the back. What do you do? The car is not drivable, not rollable? Back it in. Back it in, drop it in the back. They have the other that's gate. That's what I'm saying. That's all you can do. Even if you get in there with a short truck, dude. How many times have I been a Honda World with my truck? I've had a maneuver, and when they get busy. My point is, the longer the truck is, the less rating turning you have. Less turning, but the more uh, tip weight you have too, though. It does change the dynamics yeah. of it a little bit. Yeah, I will go. I will go with that fucking neck. Gonna use a Gonna go. Yeah, well, these are 22 and a half or 21 and a half foot beds. These are standard. Wider. Wider is not a problem. Although, the one thing I do like with the Hino is, is the removable rails. It does widen out the bed, gives you a little more usable space. It's the same width bed as we have on three, but the rails make a difference because it adds, it gives you, even with the rails on there, it gives you an extra three inches to play with. And that might be just enough to get that dually up there without hitting the rail. Well, that, that I think would be a must too on the next truck, air suspension. I do like the dump suspension on the rear. You can drop the angle a lot better. And then they all, they do have those LCGs too. You can get one of those. Yeah. It brings it down, put it, put it lower. Put it, a little more. Yeah. Plant it on there. 
Get used to planting the bed because yep. when you go to take cars off, if you don't plant the bed, what'll happen yeah. is the weight of the car will cause it to sit on the ground. Uh -huh. And then when the car comes off of it, it's going to come up like this oh, because it's not planted on the ground. Okay. Your, uh, so we want to get used to planting it on the ground. Free scroll. Yeah. Century is the lighter brand of Miller. You got to pull it out and turn it. Make sure you go to the I beams. Nice hard pull on them. If it's not front wheel drive, you can use J hooks on it. And if it's front wheel drive, then you have to issue that the hook might catch the boot as it's rolling up the bed. So you probably should use mini J hooks or T hooks instead. So you don't have to worry about that. Well, if it's a four wheel drive, I think Four wheel drive, it's front wheel drive. No, if it's a four wheel drive, you could put it on the axle. Okay, you see how he If you have a solid axle, axle some cars yeah, have uh, independent. You know, know, that's a big one. Independent, now. then you got to use the other. That it, video's not going, is it? No. I don't no. want to be on camera. It's off. I've never had I'm lying, it's on. Why the hell you wearing the goddamn helmet? Now, one of the you want to watch Get the sun off my head. You should have got the cowboy hat one. Uh, I left that in my other truck. Actually, the best one I saw was a Vikings one. I was like, did you get born? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen hard hats. You know what hard hats are made, right? You know where they originated from? They originated from battle hats. No. Harp, uh, Harp, Hoover Dam. They take their hats and they dip them. On the water and then... No, the tower. I did not know that. Marble Mystery. Well, I was, I watched that show too. Shit, you learned, you're like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, no, it's... I got lots of hours sitting in the truck at night, so modern marvels and all kinds Don't of lie, shit. Don't lie, you're watching porn. That's it. Hey. Yeah, but you can only watch Debbie Does Dallas so many times. You know, I've seen it. Is that, is that, is that it's not, good? not that good, no. They can't find her. She's off the radar now, man. Yeah, but even then, you can only watch it so much. Eventually, you've seen everything there, too. Much like YouTube. No. You gotta, then you gotta wait until more shit comes up. Does that, does that matter? Does it matter if the car is going to one side? Yeah, no. Yeah, so how do we get it? Oh, just straight the steering wheel. Yeah, you can just probably just turn it by the wheel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right there. If it's unlocked. Yeah. yeah, you can just turn it and get it to one in the right direction. Once it's on the deck, though. <laughs> Can't do it when it's on the ground. Or if you couldn't turn the wheels, you didn't have keys or something, you could do skates. Yeah, skates were good. I think you can have a, you have a analogy tire there. What? Oh, it's just a rock. Gravel yards. And remember, don't let anybody behind the vehicle while you're doing this, because if something fails, they're going to fall over. And then the next thing we do before we get behind this is we put a tie down on the front. You could. If you can, get, if you can do it without climbing yeah. on the bed, you can put it apart. Strap the tire. Yeah, strap the tire. That's why you should be able to go to the frame. Yeah, there's probably a hole on the side. Yeah. Right towards the front. That's one degrees I never liked those chain ratchets. Fighting the twist. Yeah, but they don't always get, yeah, they don't always get on the ground because depending on how far you put out the head. Sometimes you can. But a lot of times the foot's not going to get on the ground. Those are adjustable though. You can they're manually adjustable. So if you notice it, you can you could go further down. Boss, like he's a big stickler. Those feet are on the ground. Yeah, where, where it's the most important is when you start to tilt the bed. So what you can do is you can wait until after you do the hookup area. Because right now the bed's on the ground, so it's not going to take the front end of the truck. But like when he starts to tilt it now, now is when we're going to start to take the front end off the ground. So he can slide the bed forward. Then he can put it down where the foot is on the ground before it's tilted. Roll it in, you got too much weight on the other side too. Strap both sides before you get in the back of it. A lot of tension so to be putting the, on those cylinders. Have these removals so when you think something. 
Too fat? Yeah, they are. A lot of them are, rem are removable. The other thing is when they tell you it's a 96 inch wide bed, it includes this rail. Yeah. And it goes from outside to outside. So you really don't have 96 unless you take well, this have, off. I have a big pickup truck. Uh -huh. They can't put it on here, but they have these. Yeah. They did it once and they Same thing with dualies. Tire, and I said, okay, just buy a new tire. Yeah, some of the Jordans, instead of using a rail like this, have a blade. Yeah. And the blade, you're, you're getting more than 96 inches. Yeah, yeah we got that on our... Tires. They said, you can for that? No. Yeah, they didn't know the tires were used. We got a we got a Chevron with the uh, blade. You want to drop down, you drop the bed you know. You can drop the bed a little bit if you want, but before you get behind it, it's primarily why you want to have both tie downs. Yeah. Now in here, I mean, this is two notches. Use, I could use either or. That's a tie down on a what do you call it? Kind of like a. That's a T hook slot. If you were using a T hook, you'd probably want to use that angle. But uh, the main here, it really wouldn't really matter which one you use. And there might be another one underneath over here that you can use too. You could have used that with your bridle if you wanted to. You see the bridle? On the bottom, you don't even want to use it. Yeah, you got other holes. There's one right here. You're always supposed to put the minimum one from the same thing. You should put the bridle before you get behind it. See how far he tries to tilt it up before he decides to roll it in. I was watching him. I was like, damn. They were on the ground when he started to raise the bed. Then they squatted a little more. But then he's like, pump, he start trying to pump the hydraulics to lift it. I don't know. Don't get me wrong. If I see one of our drivers in, they think I'll go ballistic on them too. I was fighting that urge right now with them. Yeah. Uh, just, that's, <laughs> so much I've watched, I've had to fix trucks where those cylinders are broken because of all that tip weight on the back. And then then you get a driver's like, look, I got my front wheels off the ground. Look, you're a dumbass. Roll the bed in. Leave the feet down, roll the bed in first, get most of your weight forward to the axle, then drop the bed. Well, see, back in the day, they used to put arrows on the truck, the markers. So when they still do. The, Jaredan does. When you get to the middle of the bed with the controller, yeah. To bring it back down. My rule of thumb is, when I'm two feet out is where I'm doing all my tilt. You know, two feet away from the bed, two feet away from the locks or the cab, then I'll tilt down. Yeah, make sure my feet touch, and I'll slide the bed out. May have to raise it up a little bit as the bed goes out to keep it from scraping the ground. But I'll maneuver that as need be, and then the same thing in reverse when I'm bringing it in. I'm going to get as much of that weight in the middle of the truck before I get the feet off the ground. When that bed came up, it, I seen it was wobbling. No, it is. It's because he's putting all the load right now on that hinge pin on the back of the frame and those two cylinders. And those are the three spots where this bed will fill. Well, the wood, too, is killing his angle. Well, I, he died. The bed, will, the bed will go at idle, but no, you were too far out. You were too far out. You had too much weight out the back. That's why. You don't want to start tilting up. You want to at least try to keep your feet on the ground before you tilt and then bring much of your weight forward and then tilt. I know. I know I'm going to bring it up like this. Yeah. I usually, I usually bring him in until I'm about a foot or two away from the cab. Yeah. The same thing when I'm dropping it. Yeah, I guess the hydraulics, you're actually, the hydraulics are stringing at that point because the force against them at that amount of tip load there was more than they could handle. The bad thing is, like, if you get a truck like a Jerdan, you could actually snap those things right off. Really? Oh, yeah. I've had to fix them. What? Snap the eye loops off the uh, cylinder. Alright, that'll work even better. Yeah, you know? That's right. That's right, I'll do this side. Yeah, I'm not strapping shit if I can chain it. Come on now. I trust chains more than I trust straps. Yeah, so do I. 
like some people say that the chains are better, I mean the straps are better. I'm like, uh-uh. The -uh. straps can wear easily. Exactly. Chains yeah. tend to stretch a little bit, but they hold up, they last longer than the straps do. Yeah. You get one little abrasion in a strap, it's now compromised. Yeah, watch out for the valve scan. And the other thing I see that guys can run is, if you're going to go through a hole in the ring, you want to go where the hole that is lined up with your pull. Over here, and anywhere over here, obviously the tire could rotate and it's going to be loose. Yep. So you want it to be directly lined up, that way the tire's not going to rotate. This demonstration right now. Okay, well, we can't with that. We have to loosen that if we're going to do that. So we have to tighten that one after we do the chain. Yeah, go ahead and loosen that one up. Yeah, so normally you would use either straps on both sides or chains on both sides. We would normally wouldn't do both. Okay, so let's pull it forward till we get the chain tightened up on the other side. Okay, how tight? That's, that's good. All no we need slot. is to get it snug. We don't want to pull it till it starts to kill it. Starts to squat it off. Well, you just start yanking, breaking suspension parts. I had a guy snap an I-beam on one of these things. I looked and I was like, dude, you know how much force you had to put on that? Snap that I-beam the way you did? He bent it, snapped it, and it was on an excursion. On it was on the big front I beams. Yeah. And he was using a, it was a, it was a cab over, a Zuzu cab over with an aluminum deck. I was like, first things first, that's a little much weight for that truck. And second, I didn't even know how the hell you got that thing that tight. I didn't even think that truck would do that. And you really had to sit there and pump the crap out of that handle because I'm sure the winch, well, the, the winch would have stalled. Chains. I like these things with hooks better. Loosen it up and just undo the chain right there. You can untwist the ratchet. There you go. Now rehook it. Make sure you try to keep that chain straight so it doesn't twist on you. That doesn't seem. Is that alright? You can go out a little more if you want. Give yourself a little room away from that bar. And also, if you change links, it'll also change a little bit of the direction of it because one link is going to be 45 of the other. You'll notice that when you go to tighten it down. Pull that strap tight first. There you go. That should be good. How'd you do that? Strap. Pull, take the end, fold it, bring it up, fold it in half, and then put the uh, half end. Come up like that. Take this end. Line it out, right between the handle and the drum. Is that slot? Push it through there. Just get it through a little bit. I usually get it through about halfway or so. You can kind of adjust it, and then make sure this thing closes and locks on top of it, and it won't go anywhere. Oh, well, it's a little loose, but I get the idea. Yeah, but the whole point is, you don't have one big long strap flopping. This can flop, but it ain't going anywhere. That's tension in it. I've seen it done. Me, Everyone's got, you know, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can, when you get to the end of your, uh, when you get close to getting these tight, you can put this end in there and start tightening this end with it. And then all you got is that piece there. You could wrap them up and tie them in a loop. The only problem I hate about that is if they ever get yanked on, that's a pain in the ass to pull apart. Yeah. And uh, they can go like this. I usually just do this on all, all of my ties. It's easier, it's faster. You just, whatever is going to work for you. You know, that's the ultimate idea of it, but now you're tied. Aluminum four, but you can get away with three. You have to have two in the front and one in the back. Okay. It's a soft tail. You know what a soft tail frame looks like? It's a good one. I went to CHP. And they, and I, I already, me and my boss argue. You know, boom bikes. You gotta have two in the front, automatic. One, you can 
use in the back. As long as you can get it, if it's a steel, it's a spoke rim or a hub rim, as long as you can get it through, it holds that rear end and it will not move the forward to back. Yeah, but also can't move side to side. Nope, it won't move side to side. So you got to bring it at an angle off the rim. It side. Yeah, it will not lean. At only all. only bad lot. thing about doing rims though is some bikes. The rim may actually shift. You yeah. have to loop it in the rim. But he, but he goes, he goes, look, that's what the minimum we want. Yeah, yeah, but, that, that's but if you move my, my, my bike, you'll be using four. That, that's a, an interpretation, though. Yeah. The law says you have to have a four-point independent yeah. Yeah. So yeah, another officer might say, that's not, that's not four. You know what my boss told me? He goes, guess what? He wants moving Harleys and bikes. He goes, I don't give a care what they say. When you're moving bikes for the company, even when you're moving your own bike, in your truck, he will know you work for it. You're using four. But it's my bike, because I don't care. It's still his truck. My, even on my own truck. He makes me know. But, yeah, but, my, but he owns the truck. No, my truck. I don't pick up. Oh, I see. My little pickup truck. But you have if I'm using one. my personal truck, he goes, people know you work for me. You're using four. Because you have your stickers, right? Yeah, at the time. I was like, but it's mine. He goes, I don't care. They know you work for me. Oh, you know, when I had my bike towed from another company, they came up, and I sat there. I don't say nothing. I watch. I just look. He said, well, you mind if I watch it? I'm all, you ready to go? He goes, yeah, I'm all, really? I that's, said, shaking that bike. Really? You're not going anywhere. That's my final test on motorcycles. I grab them handlebars and start shaking it. If it's moving, it ain't tight enough. I don't mind if the rear end. I'm like, I, I don't want, mind I the want, rear end. I want no part of that bike moving. I want to be able to oh. grab those handlebars, and that thing oh, won't man, move at all. I was coming home. I was heading home on the 80 from... To Utah and the guys were heading to Sturgis they had two Hurleys right this way and I saw them and I saw the bikes fall uh -huh. I take the truck and trailer and swoop it around get everybody over on this side three hours later they came back for their stuff <laughs> they didn't realize it <laughs> they just they said fuck it lost, oh god do we need to do the uh, safe steering load formula on this truck no yes. we should <laughs> yes twice <laughs> Well, you don't have to if, as long as you stick with one guideline that we have in the industry is, and if you're going to tow with a car carrier and you have a two car carrier, if you're only towing one car, it goes on the deck. If you're towing two cars, the heavier one goes on the deck, the lighter one goes on the wheel lift. If you do that, you're never going to put one on the wheel lift without something on the deck. Mm -hmm. That's where you might have a steering issue if you put one on the wheel lift without something on the deck. because. By putting something on the deck, you're adding weight to the front wheels. So that's going to counterbalance whatever weight you pick up off the back end. You also have a fairly long wheelbase on these trucks, so you'll have a pretty good uh, uh, safe uh, steering load because of the uh, wheelbase, but we also have a long overhang. Now look at the distance from the rear axle just to get to the end of the bed, and we haven't even extended the wheel lift out yet. And then when we extend the wheel lift out to pick the car up, that's going to be even longer. So we've got a long overhang. So if you pick something up on the wheel up without something on the bed, yeah, it doesn't have stage steering anymore. But as long as you, if you got two cars, one goes on the deck, you have one goes on the bed. supposed to drop the suspension. Car, it always goes drop the bed. No, it's just an option. When you raise it, well, not if, 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 yeah, if, no, if it raises up off the axle, the frame, it will over and flip the bags. That's why you always do it. Yeah. But you have yeah, to have guys, guys pull back. So has more pressure on it. Well, you're releasing pressure off the rear axle. No, because they didn't release it when it dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, it's more pressure on everybody. Well, the yeah. valve, yeah. the valve would start to let a valve. It's because of the length of the overhang from the rear axle toward the end of the bed is. You make a turn, you make a 